as we just discussed, now we need to think about the balance sheet, okay? And I know it might look scary, now we have all these items here, right? So, uh, you, know, it, you know, you might think it's going to take a long time for us to go through all of these, how do we forecast all of these, okay? The good news is that for the question we are going to answer, okay, for the question that we are asking ourselves, it's, it, the, the most important item to look at is actually the first one, cash and short-term investment. Okay, we are actually not going to have to worry so much about the other items. The most important thing is to think about cash, right? What is going to happen to cash in 2015 and 2016? That's the key item that we're going to think about, right? So how do we forecast cash? It actually is fairly easy, right? It's not an assumption. This really is an accounting definition, right? So the uh, PepsiCo's cash in 2015 should be exactly equal with the cash in 2014 that you ended up the year with, plus whatever happens in 2015, right? So if you generated $190 million of cash, as in our example, your cash is going to go up a bit. And then you go to the future year, right, 2016, what happens? We start with cash in 2015 and then add or subtract the change in cash in the next year, right? So as we, as we just learned from forecasting the cash flow statement, what's happening here is that the company is generating a bit of cash in 2015 and then generating a large negative uh, ca uh, uh, cash flow in 2016, right? So the answer is that cash is going to go down by approximately 2.5 billion between 2014 and 2016, okay? So you could go back here, right, if you want, and just write down these numbers, right? So your cash is going up a little bit from 2014 to 2015, right? And then it's going to go down substantially from 2015 to 2016, okay? So this is the number, right? PepsiCo's cash, according to our forecast, is going to go to $6.3 billion, okay? What about the other balance sheet items, right? So as I said, we don't have to worry so much about those now, okay? But the, the solution that, that I'm going to post, the Excel spreadsheet that, that I'm going to, to, to post uh, on, um, uh, on our website, okay, actually has everything done for you. The important thing to notice is that the changes in the balance sheet have to be consistent with the changes in the income and the cash flow statement. Okay, that's what we did for, for cash. Our cash flow statement projects that cash is going to go down by 2.5 billion. The balance sheet reflects that. Okay, same idea here. For example, PPE, right? PPE is property, plant, and equipment, right? PepsiCo has, uh, has some equipment. If you are making capital expenditures, if you're engaged in an expansion plan, right, your, uh, your PPE is going to increase. Okay, so the increase in net PPE is going to be equal to the capital expenditure in 2015 minus the depreciation, right? Your assets are going to depreciate by a certain amount, okay? Same thing for working capital items, right? We assumed that the company uh, requires uh, net working capital investments in receivables and inventory. So the amount of receivables and inventory that you end, the, that you end up with in 2015 have to reflect the increase that happened during that year, okay? So it really is pretty simple, but you know, it does involve, of course, a lot of calculations, and you can check here what the answer is, right? So for example, your PPE is going up, especially in 2016, right? Because of your expansion plan, um, you know, your current assets are also reflecting, you know, receivables and inventories are reflecting the increase in, in working capital, okay? And so on and so forth. As I said, I will post the solution with all the, 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 the details and all the numbers for you to, to check, okay? But as I said, you know, really the important uh, number to think about is cash, okay? So think about this question. Now we are ready to actually answer the question with that we posted in the beginning. We've done all the work, so now it's just analysis, okay? So let's think about this. Can PepsiCo finance the expansion plan or not, given these numbers? The answer is yes, right? It seems to be yes, okay? Why? Because, you know, PepsiCo has about uh, uh, 
uh, you know, $8.7 billion of cash in 2014. That's a cash reserve that the company has. Okay? Cash is going down, of course, right? Cash is going down to $6.3 billion. But, you know, that seems like a reason, you know, still a reasonable number. PepsiCo has sufficient cash to finance this expansion plan, right? The answer would be different, for example, if cash had become negative, okay? So if you figure out that you don't have enough cash to finance an expansion plan, then you're going to need to issue new funds, right? That's when the company has to plan and uh, 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 financing go to the capital markets and raise new, new financing, okay? But in this, case, in this case, the answer seems to be yes, and notice the word seems, okay? Everything is more complicated than it seems, right? So there are two issues that you want to consider here, okay? Remember, in module one, we talked about liquidity, cash ratio, right? So yes, PepsiCo has sufficient cash to pay for the, cash, for the capital expenditure. On the other hand, this implies that PepsiCo's cash ratio is going to go down, right? If you work out the numbers, PepsiCo had approximately a 50% cash ratio in 2014. Remember, the cash ratio is cash, uh, um, cash divided by current liabilities, right? And this cash ratio is going down from 50% to 30%, right? So now Pep, you know, PepsiCo financial manager, the CFO, has to think about, is this still a good level of liquidity to have, right? How is the financial manager going to answer that question? probably by doing even more financial forecasting, right? So now you're going to, to, be, you're going to have to think about what's going to happen in, even in future years. Is Pepsi, going to go, is, Pepsi, is Pepsi going to need more cash, right? Should we maybe keep a 50% cash ratio just for security reasons and all that, right? So maybe it's not true. Maybe PepsiCo will have to issue additional external finance, okay? Plus, again, let's go back to an idea we discussed in Module 1, okay? PepsiCo is a multinational company, right? So some of this cash is, like, is, is, is likely to be trapped outside the U.S. So try to remember that. Why is this, right? PepsiCo is a multinational, right? So if PepsiCo decides to bring the cash back to the U.S., it's going to incur a large repatriation tax. So it seems like PepsiCo has a lot of cash, but in the real world, managers may actually prefer to, uh, uh, instead of using their cash reserves, managers may actually prefer to issue new debt to pay for this capital expenditure and avoid the, re re the repatriation tax. So that's another issue that a PepsiCo financial manager has to consider before you decide, yes, we're not going to issue any new external finance.